So I took this 16 foot log and turned it into a, a 9 inch cant. Exactly, 9 inch cant. I need 2 by 8s out of this. I'm going to try to get, uh, that's 2 by 8s dressed, 2 inches by 8 inches finished product. So I'm going to try to make it about 2 and an 8 by almost 9. And then allow for some shrink shrinkage. These logs are dry, meaning they've been cut probably uh, best part of a year ago. So they should be ready to build with very, very soon. I can put these maybe in my shop, in my garage, and let them uh, let them dry out. But I need uh, two of these out of this one log, and it's going to be tricky. These logs are shaped like bananas. You don't even realize how, how crooked they are until you get them on a nice flat surface like the mill. So. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, uh, is flip this on her belly, this side down, um, and take maybe one or two one inch boards that I can edge later off the other side. You'll see that in a second. And then uh, what that'll allow me to do is get down to a four and a quarter inch probably, and I'll split that in half, and that'll give me my two, uh, two pieces of wood that I need. I'm going to have to take a one inch board off the bottom of this. I don't know if you can see that from the angle you're at or not. But anyway, I love doing this. This is uh, my morning therapy. Um, so 16 foot log. I can go a little bit longer than that as you can see there's some room between the blade and the end of that log so but 16 foot's about the capacity of my tractor as well i've got loading ramps and a, and a winch that i can bring something heavier up if i need to but so far this has been all i need so <laughs> Make sure that I'm getting enough uh, enough cut off of that to get into that four and a quarter inch meat in the middle without without getting into the weight on the other side. So I think I'll take another I'm gonna take a half inch waist cut off of this right now, and then a one inch board, or I'll just do a one and a half inch board, and then I can make some commercial size uh, like four and that. And that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll flip it upside down, take a little bit off, and hopefully I'll be right in the sweet spot to get two of those two legs out of it.
of those thinner pieces uh, I'll keep. My wife makes canoe paddles. She makes other things too, but it's as clear as spruce as you can get. So, or the 16 foot piece, she might be able to get some pieces to laminate for her uh, paddle board. Alright, so now what we're going to do is split this in half and get two of our pieces. I think we're going to cut a little bit off because we don't need quite 16 feet, we need about uh, 15 foot two. It's going to work out okay. I'll let you see this little crooked log turn into a couple of two by fours. There's not much in this log, as you can see, but we'll, uh, I don't want to waste them either. So I worked too hard to get them. This one at four inches, so throw the slab away, span it up, and make maybe one or two two by fours out of this.
So I flipped that little log upside down. My gloves. And it looks like I'm going to get one piece of 1x4 strapping and two 2x4s two out of it. So not a total loss. At uh, the prices of lumber here in Chester, Nova Scotia, I think a 2x4 is somewhere around $9. Piece of uh, strappings, probably uh, four dollars anyway. So that's eighteen, twenty-two dollars out of this log that really should have gone in a burn pile. But you know, only takes a few minutes to cut it out, and I'll use those studs somewhere. That's for sure. All right, let's get at it. I always shut my mill off between cuts just to save some gas. It's super easy on fuel. I can mill about 10 hours, maybe a little more, on uh, on a tank of fuel. It's a 20 liter tank on this mill. By myself, I can mill about uh, 180, I think my best day is about 210 board feet of lumber, and that's pretty good logs and straight logs and not a lot of waste. And I can get to them in my pile fairly easily with my tractor or my skitter winch or whatever I need to extract them from the pile with. And that's about all I can hope for by myself because I'm moving the slabs and I'm stacking lumber, stickering lumber, moving the uh, moving the boards that need to be edged off to the side so I can edge them another day. And I have a friend that shows up and you've seen him in other videos. He's a, a chainsaw wizard I call him and he's just brilliant with a chainsaw. And him and I work very well, or he and I work very well together. He's, uh, as soon as the slab comes off, he's got it in the slab pile. He knows where to put the boards. He knows where to put uh, the studs that I want taken off, or if it's a customer's order, he'll uh, he'll put them in the right place so the customer can pick them up. Of course, with COVID, it's contactless. People just pick lumber up and EMT me the money they owe me for the, for the lumber. But, so he and I together, we can mill about 400 board feet an hour. It's a big difference. An extra guy makes uh, makes a huge difference. Of course, you're limited by how fast that blade can be pushed through the log. And if it was an automated mill, I mean automated as in automatic rollers, automatic backstops and clamping system, which I'm not opposed to doing that at some point, I can increase that efficiency again. But when my friend is here, he's almost as fast as the automatic. As soon as, as, soon as the, the log moves past the backstop, he's got it adjusted to the next size, the next, uh, the next cut. And he knows 
just sort of, a, we just make eye contact, we know what the other one's thinking, so we work pretty well together. So this is a almost eight foot log, it's not quite eight feet, but it's it's long enough that, uh, that I can get some studs out of it. Um, it's, you can see it's got another hook in it. This was part of a 16 foot log that I cut another log, cut it in half to try to save it because I wouldn't have got anything out of it, just a couple of pieces of strapping probably. So, so let's open this fellow up and see uh, see what's inside of it. See if I can't get uh, maybe three pieces of two by four and a couple pieces of strapping for metal roofing. So uh, that last log that uh, I forgot to turn the camera on for, I got two two by fours and one piece of one by four. So about uh, twenty-two dollars worth of lumber at today's prices out of a, a log that really should have gone to the burn pile. But I've got to uh, make use of what we got, and it seems that. The more crooked they are, the harder and the more waste they are, as you know. So, all right, let's get at it. Enough talking. Come here, buddy. Stay over here. So first thing I do is I make sure the backstops are down far enough that my blade's not going to hit it. So you can obviously see how this hook goes down. I can do it one of two ways. I put the belly up or I put the horns up. So this is hooked down. I'm just going to take a skim coat on the top of that and flip it upside down and, and see what I need to, to make something square out of it. So not getting too fussy with this kind of lumber. And you can see that a, my first cut, we're going to do seven and a half inch cut off of the off of the deck. So I set my gauge at seven and a half inches, make my first cut, flip it upside down, and then see if we can't get a uh, maybe a five inch or a five and a half or six inch cut out of it. So. Plug your ears. <laughs> So I managed to cut that into uh, two five inch parallel sides and I'll roll that up and take another cut on the top. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. It's pretty pretty crooked old log, but we won't waste it. up a little bit and I lift up my backstops up high enough that it will make a good square surface. These are perfectly 90 degrees to the bunk so a perpendicular surface for sure. Then I roll that up and it hits the side, lock that in place that I know is square. But even though I know it's square, I double checked. Just for fun, perfect. Because it's easy to ruin a log. Not so bad with one by even two by, but if you're doing a six by six or a four by four or something like that, then you'd want it square. My customers want it square. So 
So we're gonna go seven and a quarter. Yeah, seven, seven and a quarter would be perfect. That'll cut the top of that bark off. The other side is, uh, you can see this side here is a lot taller. This side here we're up to almost nine inches. So you'll see a lot of uh, wood showing on that cut, but on the other side it's just on the cusp of the bark. So that's the only way I'm gonna get that squared up uh, without spending a lot of time to get a small piece of one by two or something out of that, just not worth the trouble. three quarters of an inch from the bottom of that uh, or from the top of this bunk up. Short log like that only needs one only needs one dog to hold it in place. So we'll take another cut and find our lowest point and we're at a five inch cut there so that'll make us a five by five and it'll take a one by five off it which will give me a four by five. Flip it, take another four by uh, one by four off of it and then I'll be able to take a uh, two two by four, so I'll get a little bit out of this. Should start this up before I try to push it through.
dollars for the lumber in about uh, eight minutes, I think, or less. about the end of that log seven minutes 25 seconds I looked at the timer and we are ready to move on to a couple more logs I don't think you need to see too much more of that I'll do some video maybe another day but uh, thanks for watching once again and appreciate your subscription I appreciate uh, comments and if you have any questions or concerns or anything that you want to tell me that I'm doing wrong I'm all over that that doesn't bother me a bit um, just tell me how you do it a way better way that I'm overlooking something so anyway that's all I have to say about that for now I'll catch you in the next video